On a dangerous sea coast where shipwrecks often occur, there once was a crude little life-saving station. The building was just a hut and there was only one boat, but the few devoted members kept a constant watch over the sea. And with no thought for themselves, they went out day and night tirelessly searching for the lost. Some of those who were saved and various others in the surrounding areas wanted to become associated with the station and give of their time, money and effort for the support of the work. New boats were bought and new crews trained. The little life-saving station grew. Some of the members of the life station were unhappy that the building was so crude and poorly equipped. They felt that a more comfortable place should be provided as the first refuge of those saved from the sea. They replaced the emergency cots with beds and put better furniture in the enlarged building. The newly decorated and furnished life-saving station became a popular gathering place for its members, a sort of a clubhouse. Fewer members were now interested in going to sea on life-saving missions, so they hired lifeboat crews to do this work. The life-saving motif still prevailed in the club's decoration, and there was a liturgical lifeboat in the room where the club initiations were held. About this time, a large ship was wrecked off the coast, and the hired crews brought in the boats loads of cold, wet, and half-drowned people. They were dirty and sick, and some of them had black skin and some had yellow skin. They dripped on the rug and water stained the furniture in the beautiful new club. So the property committee immediately had a shower house built outside the club where victims of shipwreck could be cleaned up before they came inside. At the next meeting, there was a split in the club membership. Most of the members wanted to stop the club's life-saving activities as being unpleasant and a hindrance to the normal social life of the club. Some members insisted upon life-saving as their primary purpose and pointed out that they were still called a life-saving station. But they were finally voted down and told that if they wanted to save the lives of all the various kinds of people who were shipwrecked in those waters, they could begin their own life-saving station down the coast. And they did. As the years went by, the new station experienced the same changes that had occurred in the old one. It evolved into a club, and yet another life-saving station was founded. History continued to repeat itself. And if you visit that seacoast today, you will find a number of exclusive clubs along the shore. Shipwrecks are frequent in those waters, but most of the people drown. Father God, I ask that you speak to your people, Lord God. That, Lord, we wouldn't get caught up in stuff. Lord, make us your life-saving station, oh God. Help us not to turn this place into a club, oh God, or an entertainment center, or a social club, or a hangout, oh God. But Lord, let us just come into this place and be empowered by you so we can go out there. Let this be our filling station, oh God. Let this be our command center, oh God. Where we get the instruction when we go, oh God. Let us bring in the others, oh God, that are tattered and hurt. And let us pray for them at the altar, oh God. Because we have no time at the altar, oh God, because there's others out there that need to be saved, oh God, that are lost.